Our Viviana Hurtado is standing by with an expert in the industry. Viviana? Hey, Scarlett. I'm joined now by May Reed, senior economist Calvin Schnur. He has an exclusive look at how REITs weather the market moves and the sector's Q4 performance. So let's go back to what Scarlett just said, volatility, the name of the game. We know that REITs are more insulated because of their revenue stream. They're more domestically focused. But are you going to see investors, are you seeing investors piling into REITs? We well, you know REITs do have some volatility, but it's not moving the same direction as the rest of the market because they are, they're in different businesses. And if you look at the market today, even as of yesterday's close, when the S&P is down almost 15% for the year, there's several REIT sectors that have, have held on to their gains. So that shows you that investors have some confidence in their business. Sector by sector difference, certainly difference between industrials or, for example, lodging. Can you quickly touch on that? Well, lodging obviously is a frontline industry with this coronavirus because they own many of the resorts. They uh, are directly affected by the loss in travel business. Uh, you look at something like industrial, they're helping logistics facilities, they're shipping the goods. Uh, these are e-commerce sales that are not likely to be hit by someone who's avoiding them all. So let's go to the other big movements that happened in the markets, and they were all driven, of course, by these historic Federal Reserve cuts. We have Goldman Sachs' uh, Jan Hatzius talking about predicting more cuts. Tell us how that will sync with the broader economy and slower growth and the REITs model, which does well when capital is cheap. Well, the first thing is that the REITs are really well positioned for this business environment. They actually have the lowest leverage, the lowest debt to total assets they've had in 25 years. After the crisis a decade ago, they raised equity capital, so they actually have less exposure to interest rates than a lot of people might think. Uh, now, the, the over interest rate environment is very favorable for real estate. Real estate does use mortgages, other debt to finance the properties. This is actually a, a, a good market for REITs once we navigate the current corona crisis. Lots of fear, certainly, of global recession. How resilient is the U.S. economy and specifically what does that REITs play look like? The U.S. economy is facing a big headwind right now. This is a major challenge. But if you were to look two months ago, the risks of a recession were less than they were two years ago, which is surprising. In 2018, you would have thought uh, you, know, you, were, you were farther away from a recession than you are now. But we're not in a cyclical world. Then we had inflation that was edging up. The Federal Reserve was starting to raise interest rates. Uh, we were beginning trade wars. Right now, we don't have those risks. So we're actually entering this difficult period on stronger footing than we would have seen two years ago. But we do have this black swan event. And that's where I want to go to next, which has to do with this exclusive first look you're giving us, the NARI T-Tracker of Q4. It is a look back, Q4. But what can it tell you, uh, 20 years of crunchy numbers, about 2020 and what's ahead? Well, I mentioned just a minute ago, the, the REITs are well positioned. Uh, REITs had record earnings in the fourth quarter of 2019. A year ago, you would not have expected 2019 to be a record year for earnings, but they have very high occupancy rates, you know, low vacancy rates. That means their properties are full and they've got good rent growth. So again, this, this, is, this is backward looking. Before this crisis hit, though, they had record earnings and high occupancy rates. That leaves them well, well positioned to deal with the challenges. So let's talk about one sector very quickly, and that would be the retail forecast. Uh, the chart, interestingly, showed an uptick that you shared with us. But we do know that retail is realigning. There is shifting consumer habits. So what do you see as long-term leases expire and as a seasonal occupancy of Q4 as well gets kind of becomes past news? The retail's obviously been dealing with the e-commerce, but there's a lot of diversity within retail. The, the freestanding retail, the triple net lease type stores, that, that are actually performing quite well. That's not facing a lot of competition. It's the regional malls and to a lesser extent the shopping centers that are, that are losing sales to, to online. Uh, they've been able to replace their tenants. They have been able to reconfigure their spaces. We've seen a lot of news stories about how they're emphasizing services, entertainment, things like that. Now, that, that's at a cost to current earnings, uh, and that's something they're going through with an adjustment. But it, it's, a, it's a good strategy, and they're sticking with it. All right, so we're going to leave you with that very positive outlook, certainly on REITs, on the look ahead, and some interesting realignment that's happening, certainly, in the retail sector. And we'd like to thank May REIT senior economist Calvin Schnur. We thank you very much. Scarlett Romain, you heard it right here. Back to you. All right, our thanks there to uh, Viviano Hortado with that update there.